Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Today, we are raising the big question. Is PNG actually better than JPEG? Let's get started. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. If you think, oh my God, you're stealing this idea from Pix Imperfect. No, I'm actually referencing his video because I always wanted to do a video about PNG. So, of course, I researched the topic and he showing something that's really interesting. I was like, hmm, is it really the case? So I did the same experiment than him. So let's check out this thing here. We have a rectangle here with a uniform gray background. Then I have an overlay here that is a gradient and this gradient is going transparent to one side. And then we save it as a JPEG and we save it as a PNG. And you can already see on the screen that there is some color banding going on. Now, when you look at the video of Piximperfect, he's showing a comparison and he's showing it like this. So we have here the saved JPEG and then we are applying a curve to that and we see this color banding. And of course, what the curve is doing is it's pushing in the dark values and the bright values. So everything becomes very narrow and you see these bands visually and it looks really, really interesting. Now he brings the second example of the PNG. You can see there's also some color banding and then we turn on our curve, but it looks like this. It looks super smooth. It looks very nice. In his video, actually it looks more color bandy than it does here in Affinity Photo. Now, when you look closely at the video, you will see that the JPEG, of course, is in 8-bit, but the PNG he's using is in 16-bit. And of course, 16-bit has a lot more values than 8-bit has. Another important thing here is to not forget about my live stream tomorrow night. We're going to have a lot of fun. Let's go on with the tutorial. So if we have a PNG and that PNG is actually also in 8-bit, the result is looking like this. And as you see, it is looking exactly the same as for the JPEG. So in that regard, there's not really a difference between the PNG and the JPEG, even though it is looseless because the banding is already in the original data that you are saving, that you are compressing. So that is the big difference. Of course, if you have a raw file, if you have a raw photo, it is going up to 16 bit of quality so you can do that and the PNG would actually help you avoid color bending in the rare cases where you get color bending. If you start out with a JPEG on the other hand, which is 8-bit, there is no version of JPEG that is 16-bit or 10-bit or any kind of other value. It's always 8-bit. There is not really going to be a difference. So in that case, it doesn't really change anything. Also, as Piximperfect has shown in his video, if you have a photo which has a lot of different values in there, the PNG file is going to be very big. Let's go to export and you will see when I choose PNG, I get a really big size. So you can see in this case, it is 19 megabyte, a little bit over. When we have the JPEG on the other hand, with the same resolution, in a high quality of 85, we get three megabyte. And when we go up to 100, which usually you don't really need, we get seven megabyte, which still is a lot less than the PNG. So why would you ever use PNG? Now, here is a case that is very interesting for actually trying to experiment with PNG with an actual photo. And that is social media posting. Because first of all, usually when you post to social media like Instagram and Facebook and these other pages, they are meant to be consumed on a small screen. So you don't need that large resolution when you export that image. And when we go back over to PNG and let's reduce this to, let's say, 1600 here, which of course is tremendously smaller, you can see that now the file size is only 4.6 megabyte. It's a lot smaller, but still, why would you do that? Well, the reason is in some pages, like for example, if you have a Facebook page, not a profile, not a group post, but a page, a PNG might actually turn out better. The reason for that is because pages usually are commercial and Facebook wants these commercial pictures to look better so that you can use them for ads and stuff like that. So uploading in a PNG format might give you 
better results in that case. But the more important factor for P and G is actually that you can have transparency. And this is something you might use when you do web design or when you do overlay stuff like that. A lot of people ask me, how do I make my background transparent? It's actually pretty easy. So let's go here and make a circular selection like this. And then I will copy this and go here to file new from clipboard. And you can see I have this checkerboard background, which means it's transparent. If you can't see that, you want to go to document and here it says transparent background. If there is no hook, you have a white background. And if there is a hook and you see this checkerboard, it's a transparent background. And so now if I would export this as a PNG, this transparent background would still be there. And that means I have a circular image that I can overlay and I can use in my website. I can use it in designs and documents where the text is flowing around that round shape. I can use it as overlays in video. So this has a lot of different applications that are actually very nice and very useful for a PNG to be used. So now when we think again about our full sized photo, how can we improve that to get better quality? And the answer here is actually that you sharpen it for the different format, for the different medium that you want to use it in. So the best thing to do is to figure out what is the ideal size to upload to that social media page and then resize the image so it's exactly that and then sharpen it for that output. If you have Nick collection, for example, there is a plugin that says output sharpen. And with that, you can sharpen for different purposes to get the best kind of result. Two other things that you can do to make your images look better on social media is to play with micro contrast. Check out this video where I talk about that and to enhance the saturation a little bit, especially if you know that this image is going to be viewed on a smartphone or is to be viewed in a smaller size on social media, a bit more saturation is better because the smaller the picture, the more desaturated it will automatically look even though the saturation stays the same. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, leave a subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and see you soon. And don't forget about my live stream tomorrow night. Bye.